Yeah, as, as I was sort of saying, that those, um, <clears throat> if you ever go into a sublime state of, of peace, bliss, oneness and stillness, uh, it's very common, it was my experience anyway, after seeing Muji and going into those uh, states, to, for the ego to hook you back in. And actually, uh, probably I think a great thing is that those states tend to are a lot easier to attain if you're living in an ashram with, with an enlightened teacher. But they can, of course, they're also here. They're also in the middle of London, you see. But in order to master London, um, you, you need to transcend every temptation that London has to offer to be able to sustain that. So you, you, you cannot... The only thing, if you, if you go into those states, you realise that the only thing that can pull you out is your own inside hooks that you've got within your own ego. It's not the world. The world has no power to hook you out. You see, like for every, everybody's slightly different in what, yeah, as the Course sort of says, the only things that can hook you out are things which to your ego are meaningful, are valued, or have some kind of association or identification. Otherwise, there's nothing in the world that can stop you from being in the eternal oneness all the time. So if you're... Um, what, I, what I learned is um, you can function, you can, you, can do, you can do all kinds of work in the world and still stay in those states, um, but all you've done is you've let go of the meaning of these things too. So, like sometimes when I speak to people, uh, like I, I coach a lot of people, and they have work that they do. Well, the thing is with work, um, is that you want to, um, or whether it's living in London, you want to let go of the meaning and the associations that everything has got to you, so that you're taking it to, you're stripping the associations, and you'll find you can actually function far better when you're not, when you haven't got huge outcomes, expectations, wanting to get the job, wanting to get the audition, wanting people to like what you're saying, wanting uh, affirmation or approval. If you don't have any, if you drop all of these things, then grace, grace can function even better. And grace will let you know whether you're supposed to be there or not. You know, sometimes the ego will go, well, you know, I'm, I'm working in the stock market, I've, I've studied so long to get in there, I've now got in there, so I just have to you're holding on so tightly, and sometimes if you, if you let go, sometimes when you go into those states, you realize that your, your, your eternal state would rather you do something totally different. You know, it can be or can, can be that you stay there. Uh, you just don't know, but you have to let go to find out, you see, and then hence the problem. So the Course in Miracles talks about making things special. Uh, and um, uh, Muji talks about going to the uh, observer of whatever it is that's being hooked into. So if you're hooking into anything that's limited, well, what's witnessing that? Is there a detached witnesser of that? And does that detached witnesser, has that got, does it really even care whether it stays or goes? You know, so then, so here's, here's the metaphor I like to do. Like, everyone can make a, make a cup of tea without thinking about it and without it being a stressful thing. You know, your life doesn't depend on it. It's, it's a kind of a meaningless or a neutral activity. And actually you don't need a, an ego to function to do that. Because it's just like effortlessly something not, that's not your ego can just do it automatically and knows what it's doing, you know. And that can actually happen in what an ego would call a high-stress high job or in the middle of London. You see, if all the people and the noise, like I've said, with um, you only hear noise if it's interesting. You don't hear noise which is totally, which has no meaning or interest for you. Hence the thing of like, here's the metaphor: Is London noisy? Does that stop bliss, or is 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 London actually like silent bliss the whole time through? Well, actually. Um, if, if there's no interest in noise, London is actually a very silent, blissful place. And anyone who's, um, who's in, a, in, a, in a sublime spiritual state 
will not hear any noise as they walk around the streets. It'll be like silently bliss. Now, I've actually had that experience. You see, you don't track the information. It's like it's just hushed, a hushed bliss as you walk <coughs> along the streets of, of Oxford Street, you know, the busiest streets. So it's got nothing to do. Like everyone who knows, I use this metaphor. So I'm just uh, talking like, th like this, this way. You can be in the middle of a, of, a, of a busy city in a career where there seems to be lots of demands on you, and yet you can still be at peace. One of the things you know is that you have no att att attachments. Like, for someone who's at a very spiritually evolved pl place, whether they keep the job or not, or get the job or not, is kind of like, it's okay whatever happens, you see. So it's like, <clears throat> or... Um, in the course, using the Course in Miracles languaging, it says, God is the strength in which I trust. So actually, you, you don't trust, you know, you'd be trusting in your employer as your higher power, as God, you see. You'd be trusting in getting this specific job to be the one, to be the source of your security or the source of your trust. So again, the trust is not in that eternal peace. Uh, and that eternal, eternal stillness, or the eternal oneness, the trust has now devolved into the ego, and it's now placing its trust in the career, or in getting the job, or in people behaving a certain way. I th these are all um, great, great hooks, but any hook... The, the thing I would say with, um, with if you go with losing spiritual states, is it's the first thing you hook into, is like the beginning of your downfall. You know, because it's like you're in, it's like you're in these states, and if you just hook into one thought, you'll still be quite blissful, but you'll have started. It's like it's like an addiction. Now you'll start to think a little bit more, and then a few minutes later, you'll be more in your thoughts. So, as you start to do, as you start to go into the witnesser of your thoughts, eventually it's like you're always practicing being, what's the witnesser of that, what's the witnesser of that, then you start to get like what I call a defense against picking up thoughts, because you're always, it's like your orientation is inwards. When you're, when you're not conscious of your ego, then you're just in your ego, and then you think you are your ego. So self-inquiry is a bit like, for me self-inquiry is like, I'm more on the inside than the outside, metaphorically speaking, it's more like there's a stillness prior to the thoughts, before the thoughts, before the drama of the ego thoughts and, and the play and the drama of future and past and this and that. There is a silence inside of that, before that, you know, which is, which is still, which is silent. So it's more like the orientation is to be in that and not so much when in the ego one of, here's one of the things with the ego. The ego is addicted to sensory perce perceiving. It just wants more sensory perception. You know, it's just like, it just wants more drama and more contrast. So, <clears throat> Buddha sort of said, um, uh, the, uh, uh, I believe Buddha said, there's the attachment to the senses. You know, there's, there's attachment to trying to hear what's happening, the attachment to try and see what's being said, but attachment, when there's attachment, it means there's a, a latent ego investment in trying to get payoff, trying to get stimulation out of these things. They're not, one is not resting in the eternal. One is more like in the ego roller coaster of wanting um, different stuff to happen. So. So for me, one of the things is like, well, if, if you go to the, what's observing all of the senses now? And is there a detached witnesser of the senses, which is not interested in what's happening in the senses? Then you start to get this sense of inner, inner stillness, you see. Then it's okay whether nothing's happening or everything's happening. Because it's like, you start to lose what I found, you start to lose the ego needing stimulation all the time um, as a, a kind of, it's an, it's an addiction it doesn't like it doesn't like silence it always wants something busy happening it, it loves itself it loves thinking and being the uh, 
you know, I found, you know, at least what she took for my ego, she would say, you know, the story of me. What, what better drama is that than the story of how important the story is, you know. So you can, if one can drop that. And then the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the more you do it, the more you self-inquire, the more you want to be in the peace or the stillness on the inside, um, it's like an attitude. I think it's, yeah, an attitude is probably the right expression. It's like attitude. The attitude is like just to be in that. And um, it's, for me, metaphorically, it's an orientation. Orientation is like go deeper in. You know, what's observing the silence? What's observing, is there something observing that? Is there any form here? Is there any limit here? So go deeper in. So it's like, uh, as you do this, you're starting to like really delete the ego, really delete, um, delete the need or the addiction to just to be in the thoughts, the need, um, the need to be in planning future, past, this, that. Um, and also, I mean, it's a place of infinite rest, infinite peace, infinite creativity, infinite everything. And um, like St. Francis said, it's in dying that one is born to eternal life. Then you start to, you know, there's a great comfort in the recognition that, it's a recognition that one's life is eternal, you know, and the, the huge fear and that the essence of life is eternal, and one is eternal. So the, the huge, I mean, uh, we, were, we were talking last week about, uh, someone asked me a question about um, um, that this world being a, a form of vengeance. Once you recon, recognize the eternal, you realize that being in a body, believing you're a body that's, a, that's going to die and get old um, and ill, all the things that Buddha said, is actually suffering. It's like being in, in cast into cast into hell really. You know, you lose all the hair on your head, you can't run as fast as you can, you can't heal as fast as you can. You know, uh, the opposite sex thinks you know no longer notices you. So all of these things that happen. Um, so that's not exactly paradise. <laughs> so it's like but then you recognise actually that was never me. See I recognise that I'm the I'm the eternal presence that's undying, and actually that was just a big drama of the, of the ego. So, um, what I found is that um, when you go to these uh, spiritual retreats, or you, you get these spiritual experiences with these spiritual teachers, or you get it, sometimes, you know, like Ramana Maharishi just went into it suddenly. He had the death of the ego, and he just went straight off into the enlightened state. But when you get those states, you know, there's nothing actually that the ego can offer that's better than that. You know, and often, you know, you, you get these people going off into mountains. I say good luck to them, you know, because other people, you know, like everyone else is thinking, well, you know, you need to, you need to, you need to be here and uh, this, is the, this is the real world. But actually, the real world has, has nothing to offer. It, it cannot compare with what's there. And... Um, and um, like the like the course said, there's a line which I, when I had the um, white light experience, yeah, there's a line in the Course in Miracles which says, like imagine the happiest moment you've had in this world, in this life, and times it by a thousand and a thousand again, and then you'll st and then you'll get a rough idea of what it would be like to be to be in that place. So there's nothing this world can offer, you know. You know, you, might, you, could, you could say, you know, you're, you're going off into bliss and then this thought comes, but you, you, you're about to get a pay rise, you know. So you go, okay, I'll refuse the bliss so that I can get the pay rise. Then you get the pay rise and then you realise, well, I should have taken the bliss, you see. <laughs> you know, which is what I should have done. That's, that's my thing. You know, I was in sublime bliss. And for ego vanity in wanting to meet my sales targets, and uh, it, it came up with a good line, you know. 
it, you, you, can, you can lose bliss for the most stupid reason, like you're, you're in sublime bliss and your ego goes like uh, something like, what would people think of you? You need to hold up your reputation as being one of the top sellers. So you trade, you, you trade the love of God for that. And then later on you go, oops, oops, I just can't get it back that easily. So you have to do the long climb back of like years and years of clawing your way through the ego shit so that you don't, you don't, you don't sell out the presence so easily. You could sell out the present. He calls it, I think, the, what does the Course call them? The gods, the false gods. I think the Course calls them the false gods. False gods, you know, the fa false idols. Yeah, false idols, that's it. The Course calls them the false idols, you know. The, the ego's like the serpent. It goes, yeah, you know, you, you can't live in bliss. So, you know, you need me, and you pick, the, you pick that up. You pick up whatever the distraction is, and, uh, and then you've lost it. The thing as well, I might as well share this, I just feel inspired to share it today. Um, actually, somebody did ask me this from YouTube land, to talk a little bit about um, sort of like temptations and levels of enlightenment um, and stuff like that. The um, well, what are the classic temptations? There's there's lust, there's pride, uh, there's power over others, there's um, vanity. Um, there's there's the various temptations um, that that go on, and it's like you just um, so they're they're all the classic. They all come up in some form or another later on. They usually, in the gross levels of the ego, they come up in things like you know, lust is an obvious one, vanity, you know, vanity is an obvious one, pride are obvious ones, greed, you know, I, you know, I was like, I was, I was a food addict, so I was greedy. I wanted all the food for myself. I didn't care about other people, you know. I would like to take take all the food for me, you know. And I don't. I, didn't it's like I didn't want other people to share it. I just wanted it all for myself. So that's like that would be like losing losing the love of God for a donut. You see, then you get the guilt. You see, later on you see you're you're in, you're in bliss. Then you, you take you eat everybody's donuts, and then you have the guilt, and then you can't get back to the bliss because your ego's in guilt, and you've been bad. You've been you've been a greedy pig. That's what greed means, being a greedy pig, or, or being selfish in some form. Later on, though, the temptations become more subtle. You know, more, they become more the temptations of hooking into thoughts, the grandiosity of the ego, um, the ego's belief that it is the real you. Um, the Course in Miracles, you know, for me, the Course in Miracles says that my two favorite bits of the Course of Miracles are all my thoughts are meaningless and I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. Those are my two favorite lessons because if I'm not any of my thoughts, I can forget all my thoughts. There, there's no value in any thought that goes by. So that, that, that's the one thing the ego really believes it is, is the thoughts and the body. Well, I'm not the body, I am free, for I am as God created me. So if I'm not the body, then what can I recognize that's here, uh, right now, that is, um, what can I recognize? So if the body's here, what's observing the body? Is that which is observing the body, is that which is witnessing the awareness of the body, is that the body? And if thoughts are passing by, then what's witnessing the thoughts? Is the observer of the thoughts passing by is that a thought? So if I'm not either of those things, then what am I? So what, what can I be? Is what I am limited? So, so I love the Course for that. So those are what I call the more subtle temptations. It's this uh, habitual addiction to ad addicting to thoughts and the body. And then this very, very strong belief, I am the body, I am my thoughts. And one has to let that go completely. Uh, uh, and so, then late, later on, there's more subtle things. So, 
those who are aware of classical Indian literature knows that if you become very advanced as a teacher, then often the cities start to happen. The cities are the, um, the famous phenomena that happen around spir spiritual gurus, where you get instant healings with people with cancer, where spiritual teachers can be at two places at the same time. Various things that various the the they're, they're all the various cities are classified in Indian literature of the various teachers. So then the temptations come of taking personal ownership from a from an ego level of the cities. Like I performed that miracle. As soon as you say I performed that miracle, then you, you lose you, you you drop from grace. So no no ego can perform miracles. They they happen out of the the absence of the ego. So no ego can claim it's a miracle worker. So these are more subtle things. You know, even more subtle than that, um, um, like um, Hawkins, Hawkins described it. And he had, um, he had something which was very similar to Christ. And, um, and he, I think he described it in a way that's not described in the Bible. But in the Bible, you know, it's sort of said that um, Jesus was in the desert and the, the devil came up and offered him power over the world and he refused that, that, that kind of final temptation. But actually Hawkins actually um, experienced that as well and he described it. It's not actually, it's not actually a verbal thing, it's a non-verbal, it's a non-verbal temptation. Now that you've transcended the world, now that all these miracles are happening about you, now take ownership of that. And the, the subtle thing is, the, the non-verbal thing, take ownership of it for the good of the world. But there's something wrong in that temptation. Why would, one, why would something separate take ownership of all these amazing qualities to do good in the world? So that has to be refused. And uh, as the last one of is probably the last temptation, and then uh, and then um, so as you drop, so you, these are all the different types of temptations that can happen, and then um, the last thing that comes up is the terror of the death of the ego. Usually, um, uh, suddenly you you'll know it when it happened. It happened to me, and you'll know when the terror. It's like if you if you allow yourself to experience this terror. You know, you'll know it's the final terror. You know, if you allow yourself to just allow this terror to be experienced, you will, you will not have an ego after this. I mean, this is like, this is worse than physical death. Someone shooting you in the head, something in you knows you're coming back. But when it's the terror of the death of the ego, you know that no more coming back in another body, this is it. You'll never have an ego ever again. Yeah. And that, that, that is a terror. It's like the ego is going, you know, I have been your life since you've understood for thousands and thousands of years. You don't, you know, you cannot give me up. So this little terror, and if you allow yourself to experience that, then that's the final gateway to the doors to enlightenment, to <clears throat> not having an ego. Is, that, is, it, is it a long, is that, or for you a long time? No, I didn't go through it. I didn't, I... I I turned right, unfortunately, <laughs> on the, when the, uh, when the uh, thing. So, um, what it was, was me and, um, um, and I had two other spiritual seekers uh, with me, two, two seekers of other seekers of enlightenment. And um, the three of us were watching a Muji, Muji video together. And Muji was going, chop your head off, chop your thoughts off. He was making these violent things like he, wanted, he just wanted your ego dead right now. Just drop it. And then... <coughs> and then, and then... I mean, it's good. I mean, these are comedy videos, anyway. <laughs> so it was like... Um, and the terror... The terror arose in all three of us at the same time. I, I mean, I, we all knew it was the final terror of the death of the ego. And here's the thing. I mean, I think what I'm about to share is going to help a lot of people become enlightened. So as the terror comes up, the ego will bait you with its biggest thought that it can pull you out. 
of going through. So my thought, and the first thought was I was, in front, I was with these other two people and, I, and, and it was like I was about to burst into tears. It's not such a flimsy reason, like a vein, a vanity. About to burst into tears and I said, you can't allow yourself to, to cry in front of these two people. So I started to think and then it was like the gateway stopped. You know, I had refused the love of God and, and enlightenment for not crying in front of two people. Then there was another guy and um, he had the terror come up. And then the thought came up, well, you can't leave your son behind. You know, you can't leave his son. So he, he, he latched onto that thought and then the gateway stopped. It's like if you if you pick up a thought on the final gateway, it's like you, you lose you, you lose your opportunity maybe for this lifetime. And there was a lady there, and she had one as well. I should have remembered it, but I forgot the one she picked. But she picked up on something, and and she she didn't go through. So it's like if you pick up if you pick up any thought when the final terror comes, uh, then um, you don't go through. Uh, and you lose, you lose that. I was pretty sure that was the gateway. And uh, the ego will try and tempt you to try and not go through. But have the, have the attitude that you allow yourself to die. And the ego, uh, in Hawkins' thing, it was only a few minutes, and and it's dead. It is the most, it's probably the worst terror you'll ever feel. But allow yourself to go through it and don't try and run away from it. And then you make it through. I didn't make it through. Um, so that's it really.